when you look at all of the struggles in the Middle East, and I'm talking about the nonviolent struggles, Tunisia and Egypt, it's very important to understand that you, you know, the moment you achieve electoral democracy, M&Ms are not start, start falling from the sky. It's a long process. And I would show to these who are very impatient to what is happening, for example, in Egypt, that now, even a year after the transition, you still have this turmoil, but people are taking the street. And the very smell of the president taking the dictatorial, being in charge for this and that, or overtaking judiciary, really makes people really angry, and they go out on the street. Uh, we need to understand that, however, the transition is a three-step process. So what is actually happening is that you have a phase one, which we know a lot about. This is how you mobilize people, how you achieve unity, how you build numbers, how you use communications, how you get rid of the bad guys. Then the phase two, which we too often oversee, is what happens once you shake this building. If the, the government is rolling on the street, it is very likely that the most organized groups will take over. Look at the Burma. The military step in to solve the situation and somehow stay in power for 25 years. Scuff in Egypt, they overtook and say, we will do the transition. Military is not the, the entity which can easily do the transition, and, and in fact, in history, never did. So what is very important to know is how to make this revolution happen, but also how you make the swift transition to the democratic government means you need to have a democratic government, or at least plan in charge. There are like five most common mistakes movement makes. First, they forget about the vision of tomorrow. Vision of tomorrow is not getting rid of Mubarak. Vision of tomorrow is having democratic and prosperous Egypt. Vision of tomorrow was not getting rid of Milosevic. Vision of tomorrow was having Serbia in peace with neighbors, economically prosperous, complete democracy, and relatively on the way to the EU. That was the pressure being put on the new government from the day one after the revolution. We were highly criticized that we are using the same toolbox <coughs> against the new government when Milosevic left. But I actually think that was very healing for the new government because they are accountable and they understand the people and the numbers count. When you look at this second big mistake is uh, too often you lose the momentum. You have this powerful momentum, then you make the fireworks, you go home, and then instead of continuously changing the system, you leave other players to take the place. What in the world make you think that if only a small group of hobbits was capable to deal against the powers of Mordor, these other guys who are incapable to struggle against Mordor will sometimes efficiently govern your state without your help. They need your help. You need to stay tuned. Then, I mean, this is, to come back to the fishery, movements are like sharks. If movement stops, movement die. Shark must be swimming at all times in order to survive. So there is also third very common mistakes. Don't fall in love with your new elites too fast. New elites can find the shoes of old elites very, very comfortable. So keep them accountable. Last but not the least importance, maintain the unity. Unity is a foremost principle of success in online <coughs> struggle. And I know it's very difficult. I mean, the real problem is that when you have a, this boogeyman sitting on the top, he's a very strong unifying factor. But what when the boogeyman is not there anymore? You get rid of them. So, but this is. For some nations, specifically nations like Egypt or, or, or Serbia, you know, it's always easier to unify against something than for something. It's a very bizarre logic. But when you look at the Middle East, uh, keep patient. We are talking about hundreds of millions of people moving from dictatorship to democracy. And we will see the end of this process. Call me an optimist, but the world was far more different animal back there in the 80s. Look at the Eastern Europe and look what Valencia started. Eastern Europe is now mostly consisted of democratic societies. Look, look at the South America, look what happened after Pinochet fell. South America is mostly consisted out of democracy, now Balkans, and you know, now the South Africa, open, North Africa opening. So we are looking at this, what they some call fourth wave of democratization. I'm not a social scientist, but more and more small group of young people, mainly outsiders, are taking the show, and sometimes they do it with very good results. Mm -hmm.